Important technological strides have been made which have fostered tools that have allowed us to gather and understand information from the activity of our brains ever more cheaply and efficiently. With some imagination, one can foresee a future where there is an increased interaction between minds and machines, or even changes in the way and the extent to which we can impact the environment around us. Polycortex is a dynamic group of students from Polytechnic Montréal and the University of Montreal who share a passion for neurotechnologies. Electroencephalography is a neurotechnology that provides information about the electrical activity of brain cells with excellent temporal re uh, resolution. The responsiveness and non-invasive nature of EEG makes it ideal to the, impl to the implementation of brain-computer interfaces. As our submission to the Open Challenge component of this year's Neurotechics student competition, we feature our club's demonstration brain-computer interface, Mindpong. A, pi a pioneering uh, mind control game also called Mindpong but was featured online as part of a company's effort to raise funds towards a charity dedicated to supporting brain tumor research and awareness. Like the mind control game before it, our version of Mindpong offers a mean for players' brain of waves to communicate with a computer and directly see the impact of quick changes in brain activity. Unlike the under Mind Pong, which drew in for its inspiration from the well-known arcade video game Pong, however, our Mind Pong was created after the actual game of Ping Pong. The goal of the two-player game is to physically move a real ping pong ball in your opponent's direction using none other than your own brainwaves. Since its creation by some of the founders and very first member of Polycortex, Mindpong has been, has been continuously approved upon and optimized. As an EEG signal-driven multiplayer game, it requires two Muse headbands and an Arduino Uno microcontroller board. Open a wooden support dress, a plastic tube, at the end of which two fans are located. And opening a, in the, at the midpoint of the tube allows the ball to be introduced inside the tube. The EEG signal for each Muse headband is communicated to a computer via Bluetooth. The computer software is linked to the microcontroller, which carries the signal that activates, activates the fans based on EEG activity. The goal is for one player to move the ball towards one end and the other player to move the ball towards the other end. Mindpong is designed to allow the selection of specific types of EEG activity and once selected, the greater the amplitude of the processed signal of a given muse had been, the more its corresponding fan rotates. The, ga the game relies entirely on the PyMuse open source library available on our GitHub page and our data is acquired with the Alexandre Bagrachan Muse LSL library at the standard rate of 256 sales samples per second. In order to control the many hardware devices mounted on the Mindpong, we're using an Arduino Uno. We have set up a routine that enables a game loop so that the game can be easily replayed. Initially, the flags mounted on two servo motor races to indicate the beginning of the game. The flag circuit is composed of three components for each of the two flags. A laser emitter, a laser receiver, and a servo motor with the flag affixed to it. They are all linked to the Arduino's UNO's GPIO and powered by the 5V output of the Arduino. Then, a parallel fan control circuit ensures the fan's power supply and implements a pulse width modulation to control the fan's intensity. To do so, a N MOSFET transistor blocks and enables a 12V current to flow to the fans. We are using a simple flyback diode to provide a path to dissipate energy stored by the motor inductance. Finally, the Arduino is pulling the value received by the laser receiver so that when the ball goes through one end of the tube, we can detect the end of the game and raise the winning flag. Red wins! This circuit is entirely embedded on a printed circuit board fully designed by one of our freshest first-year members. Also, to get a nice look and finish to this project, we use a laser machine wooden parts. This allows us to attach the laser and the photo receiver to the tube and to get a very nice looking front panel. As part of our MindPong optimization efforts, our team set out to add an electrode to each of our Muse headsets. 
All the steps to adding an auxiliary electrode to Muse EEG headsets were made available online in a tutorial originating from a member of the Los Angeles NeuroTechX chapter. An additional available channel for each headset greatly expands the possibility of single derivation observations. The addition will also be useful when seeking to reproduce results or observe events that are highly localized spatially. Hi, Mosa. Since you mainly worked on the interface, can you tell me more about how this playtab works? Yeah, sure. Um, so the playtab shows the start button to uh, initiate the game. So there are several key elements to, the, to this tab. So there's an arithmetic based uh, problem that's presented to the players with the intent of initiating a significant change um, in, the brain, in their brain activity. Two modes are available, there's the drill exercise mode and uh, there's a fill in the blank mode which is a bit more challenging, it's a bit more counterintuitive. So each category has a difficulty uh, drop-down menu to make them more accessible to players of all ages, all abilities. So there's also the relaxation mode which, is, uh, which instructs the player to simply uh, relax um, this mode pr is primarily uh, driven by the expectation that higher frequency activity will progressively um, decline as the player as the players uh, relax, and the player with the lowest activity wins the game. So what it so yeah. Okay. And uh, can you tell me a little bit uh, about how the analysis works? Uh, the uh, yeah the ana analysis tab yeah sure. So the analysis tab features static data, time domain, and uh, spectrogram visualization. Uh, the data allows us to determine if a significant response was observed corresponding to the uh, to answering the mathematical problems shown on the play tab. So it allows to continuously continuously improve our EEG activity detection algorithm to make it more responsive to human responses. The game uh, also uh, I think the game and the game date and time is also recorded at the same time, so we know what time. Yeah. And finally, what is your The setting time allows us to, the basic configuration of the of the selected news uh, device. So the goal of this tab is simply to link the hardware and the software so that they, they can communicate accordingly, so that the, the data is streamed properly uh, between the, the hardware and the, and the interface. That's basically what it does. MindPong is more than just an entertaining and educational tool. Indeed, there are concrete applications to signal features extraction and classification, with many carrying clinical implications. One such application is the study of sleep. Sleep can be described as featuring several stages which are defined in part by EEG signal behavior in the time and the frequency domain. Interestingly, sleep stages have well-defined physiological and cognitive attributes. For instance, dreaming during sleep involves the deactivation of the prefrontal cortex, cholinergic neuromodulation, and the preservation of perception. The physiology of sleep can provide a window into psychiatric and neurological disorders. A manifestation of Alzheimer's disease, which has been linked with cholinergic system degradation, is sleep fragmentation. A large sleep database is available online and provides stage-labeled sleep data. As a result, it was possible for a team to study and generate representations of sleep stages from a single EEG derivation. In the context of our submission, a simple feature-based classifier was built from static data frequency bands distributions. While the simple classifier is limited, it provides guidance for manual MUSE sleep data labeling towards more advanced machine learning-based classification. With more MUSE device sleep data acquisition and labeling, it is likely that the software that drives MindPong could be used for online sleep classification and intervention. Live sleep monitoring could allow us to gain a greater appreciation for cognitive and physiological changes associated with mental health disorders and contribute to the development of new prevention and treatment methods. MindPong is a great game in its ability to bring together multiple fundamental elements of a brain-computer interface into a whole that is both immersive and appealing. The game has had a history of success at demonstration events and never ceases to captivate minds of all ages. Aspel Cortex continues to develop the technology behind MindPong a wealth of knowledge is gained and shared amongst our members. There is much potential for BCI technologies like MindPong to have a tangible impact on society, and we hope that describing how it works and making available the results of our efforts will inspire others to pursue similar projects in the future. We give special thanks to all our sponsors for helping us bring our project to life and making our participation to this great competition a reality.